Growing up, my mom would always warn me about making bad decisions. She'd say, You're just a teenager. Your brain isn't fully developed yet. She wasn't wrong. She was talking about my frontal lobe, the part of the brain associated with decision making. It's the last part of the brain to develop, not fully mature until young adulthood. So as much as I hated to admit it, mom was right, that teenagers are more prone to make bad decisions without a fully functioning frontal lobe. Your brain has tons of different regions like this that control different thoughts and functions. In the frontal lobe, you have the prefrontal cortex, which controls cognitive function. You've also got the hippocampus for memory, the occipital lobe for vision, the cerebellum for balance, and countless other regions that do everything you could imagine. All these different parts of our brain don't operate separately from each other. Neuroscientists can map the interactions between brain regions using mathematically derived networks. A network is a set of system elements, known as nodes, and the lines that connect them, known as edges. In neuroscience, the nodes are the different parts of your brain, and the edges are the patterns of activity that connect them. You can find networks in the brain when you figure out what nodes in the brain activate together. Different parts of your brain can work together in networks to do specific tasks. So let's talk about one brain network in particular. My friend Erin is going to demonstrate for us how the default mode network functions. That's a little neuroscience joke for those of you who are confused. The default mode network is a set of brain regions that activate when we're at rest. Surprisingly, our brains are still very active, even when we're not. The medial prefrontal cortex, the posterior parietal cortex, and the temporal parietal junctions are all nodes that activate when we're at resting state. Our bodies default to this pattern of activation when we aren't doing much else. But why do we have the default mode network? What are our brains doing that we aren't aware of? Our brains are active because at resting state, we let ourselves get lost in thought. Whenever you find yourself daydreaming or your mind wandering, your default mode network is being activated. This network has been implicated in depression for those who continuously ruminate over negative thoughts. The default mode network is important for our social brains, too. For example, the temporal parietal junction is associated with understanding the mental states of others. People with autism often struggle with understanding the thoughts and feelings of others, so the default mode network is a huge region of interest for autism research. Studies have found that activity between nodes in the default mode network is diminished in autism spectrum disorder. The default mode network is a set of different brain regions that activate together to help you think about yourself and think about what others are thinking. That's a lot of thinking for today, so I should probably wrap this up. I hope you were able to learn a bit about how neuroscientists study interactions in our brains and how the default mode network is used in our everyday life. Thanks for watching.